SpaceX, the vehicle responsible for bringing astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface, could be carried out by 2026. That's why having numerous Starship flights between 2024 and 2025 becomes absolutely crucial. Gwyn Shotwell, SpaceX's COO, highlighted the necessity for their colossal spacecraft to complete a minimum of 100 flights before embarking on the lunar mission. It's an ambitious milestone that SpaceX is poised to achieve. Consequently, as they prepare for the forthcoming bustling years, notably the pivotal 2024 year, with Starship's awe-inspiring test flights, SpaceX has been swiftly and efficiently upgrading its Gateway to Mars facility. Among the myriad preparations, the addition of a third launch tower has sparked lively discussions recently. After only about eight months, another completed Starship launch tower will emerge at Starbase. This will be the third launch tower following the two towers previously built by SpaceX. It might be erected at the location of the recently cancelled suborbital pad A. The seventh section of the third tower, out of a total of nine, was placed onto the barge at the Kennedy Space Center on December 15th for transport to Texas. It'll join other structural components that have been present at Starbase since last month, getting ready for an upcoming massive technical project. And if you didn't know before, SpaceX planned to operate the second launch tower in Florida, which was built in 2022. However, due to modifications needed to the ground support systems for Starship and the necessary safety measures to ensure that spacecraft launches do not impact the surrounding areas of the launch complex, leased from NASA, the second tower underwent very few changes and wasn't the suitable choice at the time. But in the long run, according to Musk's plan, sooner or later, Starship will also launch from there. So, the priority remains with Starbase, and the third launch tower will be ready towards an ambitious schedule. By then, Starbase could have two fully functional OLTs in Texas and two stacked Starships ready to launch. It'll be a remarkable sight to witness and a testament to SpaceX's innovation and vision. With the towering structure reaching an impressive 145 meters in height, comprising nine welded and bolted sections, SpaceX can initiate the process of equipping it with a complex system. This system includes bus engine-driven arms, fuel conduits for Starship, hydraulic systems, and a network of cables and pulleys, transforming it into what Musk affectionately dubs it as Megazilla. It could be completed at any time in the coming year thanks to the bold capabilities that often take us from one one SpaceX surprise to another. So what does the future hold for Megazilla? When will OLIT-3 be utilized while Starship has yet to reach orbit? We'll have a predicted timeline that we believe aligns closely with SpaceX's commitments in the upcoming missions. With the third launch having drawn numerous lessons from the first and second launches, SpaceX will demonstrate the ability to address issues like shortages, thrust anomalies, and fuel discrepancies with the Super Heavy booster. It's safe to say that this is a launch where the Starship will definitely reach orbit, but the Starship's return will be an epic splashing performance on the ocean. In the next flight year, SpaceX will probably attempt to use the catch tower, and it's predicted to be mostly successful on the first try. However, it might cause some damage to the tower, and it may not be able to prevent the removal of debris from the tower and the super heavy booster. That's right, stories of bruises and bumps are perhaps not uncommon in space tests. Of course, they'll have to fix their Mechazilla 1, and do you think SpaceX will be slowed down by this setback? Well, it could be said that only NASA could face delays if their integrated launch tower is damaged, but SpaceX is a different story. Don't forget that SpaceX has the third launch tower at Starbase, which they'll approach as a backup. They might experiment with successfully catching the Super Heavy booster and immediately study it to demonstrate that the booster recovery is fit for relaunch. Starship could launch four to five times in the next 12 months, including missions that fulfill the requirements of U.S. government agencies to advance reliability. By the second half of 2025, SpaceX might deploy the first test flight of a used Super Heavy. This is a crucial milestone showcasing the frequent reusability that lies at the core of cost reduction, a key 
factor in SpaceX's competitiveness in the vast launch market. However, success is rarely immediate, and setbacks are part of our daily growth, so I wouldn't expect the first reuse of the booster to be flawless. Starship will likely undergo multiple tests involving various orbit capabilities, returns, and landings. I predict they'll achieve successful Starship reuse by 2027. SpaceX will eventually have many launch towers matching the number of Super Heavy boosters. Given their intention to launch once every hour, having two to three launch towers may still not be enough. The combination of building additional launch towers with Mechazilla's unique capability to catch Starship will help SpaceX optimize time, effort, and money. This becomes crucial as Starship's private launches in the future become more prevalent than other companies. However, constructing a Mechazilla launch tower is no easy feat. It has a sophisticated technical design and construction process, unlike any other launch tower that's ever been created or has ever existed. In the nearly three years since Elon first tweeted about attempting to catch the super heavy booster with the tower's arms, we couldn't have imagined how it would be accurately executed. For just that reason, is it worth SpaceX going through all the trouble to build this crazy machine? They devised a method to land the Falcon 9 rocket upright on its legs, an accomplishment unmatched by any other aerospace company even years after its initial success. On December 21st of 2015, the Falcon 9's first stage achieved a historic milestone by landing flawlessly on solid ground at Cape Canaveral, a feat unprecedented at the time. Merely a few months later, on April 8th of 2016, the Falcon 9's first stage accomplished another groundbreaking moment by successfully landing on a drone ship positioned in the ocean for the very first time. Why does SpaceX want to elevate things even though they're already at the pinnacle? Musk clarified it on December 30th of 2020, responding on X or Twitter at the time, as he often does. When asked if the Super Heavy would land like a Falcon 9, Elon replied, we're going to try to catch the Super Heavy booster with the launch tower arm, using the grip fins to take the load. People speculated that the booster might be too tall and heavy for legs. Elon explained, legs would certainly work, but the best part is no part. The best step is no step. In essence, he's saying they could take the easy route, but he's intentionally choosing the more challenging path, and there's a good reason for it. Musk added, saves mass and cost of legs, and enables immediate repositioning of the booster onto the launch mount, ready to refly in under an hour. If the Super Heavy were to land on the pad like the initial Starship tests, bringing it back to the launch mount, even if it's nearby, would be a significant significant undertaking. It'd require a mobile crane and the large tank tread transport vehicle used at Starbase for rocket movement. The process involves the crane lifting the booster, placing it on the transport, moving the entire setup to the launch mount, using the crane once more to return the booster to the mount, and then driving both machines back to the hangar. Landing legs are not only heavy, expensive, and complex, but they can also be fragile and require intensive maintenance. For instance, the Falcon 9 comes down with significant force, and although SpaceX uses a crumple zone called crushed cores in the legs to absorb the energy, these need replacement after each landing. While this isn't a significant issue for Falcon given the refurbishment needed for kerosene burning engines, the Starship and Super Heavy, designed for rapid reusability and featuring clean burning methane engines, can't afford the time for inspections and leg refurbishment, especially at Elon's envisioned launch cadence of three launches per day per booster. So that's why Elon Musk built Mechazilla. It was just his way of taking rocket engineering to the next level, while also making Starship construction even cheaper, even renewable, use more and more effectively. In short, SpaceX is growing stronger with its own Starship rocket plans, and that also means we can expect some massive technical feats. While SpaceX currently operates only one Mechazilla tower at Starbase, the experiences and lessons learned during this operation are sufficient for them to construct another launch tower right next to it seamlessly and without any hurdles. However, there is more work that needs to be done and these are just the very basic steps for SpaceX. Surely, more fascinating developments await us in the future beyond what we can currently imagine. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comment section down below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, once again, we thank you so much for watching and we hope to see you again next time. Until then, happy holidays.